protesters are upset over the relocation of convicted felons in their town. Let's hear from them. Ma'am, how do you feel about convicted felons in your community? I'm a mom with four little kids. I don't like it. I say, get out of town. Our families don't want people like him here. Get out. I'm here in front of a group of angry protesters upset with the relocation of Arvin Ed Farnsworth to the town of Centennial. Mr. Farnsworth, Mr. Farnsworth, Mr. Farnsworth, how does it feel to be kicked out of three communities? The hell with these people, I don't need them. I got a place to go. I'm invited to stay in a little town called Gravesend. Investigating a series of missing felons, in particular Luke Devlin, who's suspected in the Gravesend kidnapping? I have no comment. Can you comment on what's happened to some of these missing felons? Look, none of the parolees in question are officially missing, and no one has filed any complaints. I have nothing else to say. Excuse me, Mr. Graves. How you feeling, Dan? Oh, thanks to you, I feel great. I want to thank you for paying for my treatment. Lord knows I couldn't afford it. How long will you be gone? A few months. Doctor says he'll need some time to recuperate. We can't thank you enough for taking care of the hospital bills. It was nothing. Dan, you just get better. Take care of Edna. Will do, Mr. Graves. Thanks, Chrissy. I know you helped, too. As you know, we're expecting a guest, so I'd like you all to review the enclosed documents so we can properly care for him. Tag, you can count on us. I know I can. Trust is what makes this town so special. To Gravesend and good friends. Gravesend and good, good friends. friends. Here we go. Doc, can I speak to you for a minute? Sure can. I, uh... I brought you a little something. Why don't you bring it in? Sure. So you think it'll look good here? That's great. I thought so. Where everyone can appreciate it. how much I love hiking. I know, isn't it pretty? Yeah, the bugs are great, too. 
You're too slow. You better keep up. Shit. I thought you said you'd like to hike. Yeah, I like to hike, but I prefer to stick to the trail. Yeah, but... Jill! Ah! Jill! Jill, are you okay? I've hurt my leg. I don't think I can stand. Can you go get a rope or something? Okay, okay. Just don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere? You dumbass. I can't go anywhere. Okay, I'll be right back. Afternoon. Howdy, sailor. Anything I can do you for? Um, uh, how about a water? No chaser. <laughs> <laughs> you sure are a looker. Haven't seen you before. Well, that would make us just about even. Haven't seen you around either. And I'm just passing through. Don't pass too quick. Somebody might want to catch you. Like me. <laughs> Hi, Marty. Hi, Marty. Marty, how's Chef Parker doing these days? Right about now. He's a worm sandwich. Beg your pardon? He's pushing up daisies. He bought the farm. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> what? Just admiring the view. You make me hungry. Uh, Marty, let me give you a piece of advice, my pretty little flower. You be very careful what you ask for. Because she just might get it. <laughs> Them words just might come back to haunt you. Oh, you are such a peach. <laughs> and you're a dandy. If I can show you around town, I'd be glad to. Gee. <laughs> I don't doubt that, Marty. I don't doubt that at all. You have a good afternoon, you hear? And you too. <laughs> good looking. Nice place. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier to walk around if I didn't have to share with the fire department. <laughs> uh -uh. There you go. Do you want to buy a ticket or you want to ask me something? I know you from someplace. I doubt it. No, no, you look like... <laughs> you look like somebody. I get that all the time. Curse of beauty, I guess. Uh, I'm Special Agent Paul Rickman with the FBI. Hmm. Yes, you are. Uh, Sheriff Bob Hooper, nice to know you. Bob? Well, Sheriff Bob Hooper, we've got a little problem with your town. That's so. Seems you've been collecting violent felons. News to me. You've had a whole menagerie of these felons wander into your little hamlet here. Star molesters, serial rapists, the scum of the earth. This place is like a magnet, a vacuum cleaner, a veritable black hole for vermin. However, once they get here, nobody ever seems to hear from them again. Interesting town graves in. They've always been good to me. 
So have you seen any of these guys? Well, I know where he lives. Well, I'll tell you, having the morgue right next door is convenient, but never have much gotten used to places like this. Yeah, well, welcome to the club. You know, there's something about the smell, whether it's a hospital, a place like here. Got my parents were both sick at the end of their life. And we go to... What the hell is that? That's Fred. Sorry. Unlike me, he, uh, comes out the closet from time to time. This is our extremely colorful town coroner and doctor. Doc, this is Special Agent Rickman. He's with the FBI. We've met. Doc. So, what brings you back to our town? Our Fed here wants to see our newest tenant. Okay. So, can I, uh, offer anyone a beverage? Beer? Wine? Bong, perhaps? Can we just get on with this? Hold on to your nose. It's gonna be a little rain. The hell's the matter with people? Why would anybody do something like this to a human being? Agent Rickman, have you ever seen anything like this before? Yeah. Sheriff, I'd like to go see Mr. Graves. What for? For old times' sake. You're talking about talking to an Alexander Graves. You don't just waltz right up to the front door and demand to be seen. That's Doc here. That's his brother-in-law. You'll see me. This is really annoying at me. I know I've seen you somewhere before, Sheriff. You ever work on the East Coast? No, not me. That must have been somebody else. You know, you look a little tense. How well do you know Graves? Oh, I don't know, not, not too well. I mean, he seems like a genuine fella. I'll tell you this, I don't think the town could do without him. Yeah, he's a real treasure, all right. You, what, you know him? We've got history. It was the most high-profile case of my career, recovering the kidnapped child of multi-millionaire Tarkington Alexander Graves. Right. Now tell me again, which way you want us to... Did we get him? Nope. He wasn't on the line long enough. Damn it. All right, Mrs. Graves, the kidnappers just gave us instructions on where they want the $4 million ransom delivered. Now I'm going to have one of my men go down to... No, you won't. Mr. Graves insists on taking the money himself. I can't let him do that. I hell you can't. It's done. Now, where's the drop? Tag was way over his head. So I sent two of my agents to trail his car. The fates dealt me a lousy hand that night. Some freak breakdown on a one-lane bridge in God knows where. And unfortunately, my men lost tag. Without my agents backing tag up, he had to face the kidnappers alone. Later. Money first. Bullshit. My boy no money. Not so tough now. Huh, bitch?
Tell me where my son is. Now. Wasn't my idea. I just had... Shut the fuck up. Take me to my boy. You can't kill me. You'll never see your kid. There are worse things than dying. <clears throat> oh. Devlin's accomplice surprise tag, and they got away with the money. The boy was found murdered. He had been eviscerated and skinned. Chrissy? No. No. No, 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 no. Don't look. Don't look. I want this to be the last image of Philip. No. Chrissy, don't look. say you got some history there, don't you? Tag definitely identified Luke Devlin, and we got him. But the trial didn't quite go as planned. Where's Tag? He's still at the courthouse. I'm afraid we've had a setback. Our friend Rickman, he just... He just dropped the ball. What are you telling me? He didn't have probable cause for his search. The defense just ate him up on the stand. So what are you going to do? File a civil suit. A civil suit? Just tell me what happened. The judge granted a motion to dismiss. They're letting him go. They can't do that. He is a filthy, murdering scum. They can't do that. I am so very sorry. But unfortunately, under the law, even murderers have rights. And what about my son's rights? My rights. A mother's rights. He is the one that should be dead. He should be strung up and killed. This isn't fair. This just isn't fair. I'm here for closure. To fix a mistake. Jesus, you must be real popular around here. I'd say this in about 10 minutes. It's gonna suck to be you. <laughs> He's dangerous. We're not ready for him. Child's play. He's different. Why are you pushing this? Because I like to see how the other half lives. What other half, Tag? The timid half. You have somewhere to go. work so hard, Mark. 
Would you like to come in for a drink? You don't have to ask me twice. Tell me how to get to Graves End. Uh, that's easy, fella. All you gotta do is set. Good morning, Coach. Hello, Marty. I'm here to pay my bill. Ooh, thank you. So, what's new? He's here. He say anything? You gotta be kidding. Those guys are tighter than a cow's ass in fly season. Well... Let me know if you hear anything new. For you, the moon. Thank you, doll face. Give my love to Chrissy. I'll do it. Oh, good looking. But look what the cat dragged in. Hey, Marty, I need to get some gas. You know, most people would put their gas tank next to the pump. Seems you found the sheriff all right. Oh, yeah. How you doing, Bull? I'm doing all right, Marty. How you doing? Doing great. Seems you two handsome gentlemen just missed Mr. Graves. Oh, is that a fact? We're fixing on going over there right after this. Looks like I've got some more customers. I'm gonna have to go. See you later. All right, good looking. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bull. Bull. Robert Bull Hooper. That's who you are. Do these people know who you are? They know all they need to know. I'm the sheriff, I'm a damn good one. Oh, you're a damn good one, all right. A damn good psycho cop. Damn good at blowing a motorist head across three lanes of freeway. Amazing what a 44 mag will do at point blank range, isn't it? Made national headlines. What's done is done. Now that's in the past, it's behind me now. You know, I always wondered what happened to you. I certainly understand how you ended up in this shithole. may seem like a shithole to you, but to me it's a second chance. Why don't you get in the car? Let's get a move on. Come on.
Uh, listen, Chrissy, I need to get a few things in town, and I'm a little short on cash. Well, we can't have that now, can we? Here. You can get whatever you want with this. Thanks. I owe you. You just paid in full. Tags here. Make yourself scarce. Tedesco. Thanks for showing up. Sure. I'll be there in a minute. for what happened. But I know in my heart of hearts, no matter what I would have done, the outcome would have been the same. Oh, Philip. Sleep peacefully, my sweet child. God sees the truth and waits. Yeah, hi, how you doing? Uh, we're here to see Mr. Grave. You know, I've never been on the other side of this gate. This is only the tip of the iceberg. How do you do, sir? We're here to see Mr. Grave. Whew! Oh, my, oh, my. I must tell you, this is certainly one of the nicest houses I've ever been in in my entire life. I'm Sheriff Hooper. This is Special Agent. We've met. We've been expecting you. This way, gentlemen. Agent Rickman, how pleased I am to see you again. How long has it been? It's been about a year, Mr. Graves. 11 months and 16 days is more precise. Sheriff, I believe this is your first visit to my home, isn't it? Well, yes, that's, uh, that's true. It's most impressive. I understand you throw some swell shindigs here sometimes. Well, we'll just have to invite you to one of our swell shindigs sometime. That would be nice. Thank you so much. So, Agent, what brings you to my little corner of the world? I'm afraid it's some old business, Mr. Graves. Hmm. I've always found old business to be cold business. I never discuss it without a warmer. Sheriff? Well, and you know, I really shouldn't. I'm on duty. Sheriff, this is 20-year-old scotch. I insist. Well, all right. I don't want to seem inhospitable. Departmental rules, sir. The reason I'm here, the Mr. The reason Graves, is to live, to grow. Otherwise, we stagnate. Salute, Sheriff. Now, Agent, let me show you my collection. You too, Sheriff. You'll excuse the mess. My home is in constant renovation. Ready?
I call this the Great Hall. Oh, boy. You've been busy. You must be quite a marksman. Oh, yeah. I got that one in Africa, in the Serengeti. A 900-yard shot. In case you didn't know it, that is one hell of a shot. Got that one in Spain, and what used to be Franco's private reserve. Bagged that buck in the rainforest back in 88. 300 miles down river, 20 miles inland. Rain like you can't imagine. Bugs so big, you could almost shoot them. Mm. He was so worth it. And who sleeps here? You're hunting go beyond animals, Mr. Graves? That, that is a very rare item indeed. That belonged to a wealthy man who perished at sea in the Titanic. How's that for irony? The man plans for a coffin and winds up in a tomb. So many stories. So, what's this about old business? We found him. Dead, I hope. Dead as can be. Some hikers found him, actually. He's over at Doc's. Where did he die? We don't know that yet. Do you know when Mr. Devlin died? No, we don't. Is there more? You didn't ask me how he died, Mr. Graves. Okay. He was skinned, just like your son. This is an old business at all, is it? Just following the evidence, Mr. Tedesco. My client has nothing else to say. I'll handle this. So you had no evidence when Mr. Devlin died? No. And you had no evidence where Miss Devlin died? No. Mm hmm. And you had no evidence that could place me at the scene of the crime? No. Hmm. And you still suspect me? I'd love to hear more of what you don't know about this case. With all due respect, Mr. Graves, I do think it a little odd that Luke Devlin's body is discovered in your town. His body skinned just like your son. Isn't that a little bit too coincidental? Coincidences are bound to happen. Well, there's an old saying, Mr. Graves. Coincidence after coincidence after coincidence is no longer coincidence. So, Agent, will you be charging me with a coincidence? That's an interesting piece. Where did you get that? That is a recent addition to my collection. See, African tries and made their shields out of animal hide or the tanned skin of their enemies. It's barbaric. But if you saw someone you knew on a shield being brandished by your enemy, you'd have second thoughts about attacking them. Just to wait to render your opposition impotent, wouldn't you say, Agent Rickman? speak again, Mr. Graves. I look forward to it. And please, pass along my best wishes to your lovely wife. She'll be pleased. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. That went well. I don't want you talking to him. I can handle Rickman. Now, if you'll excuse me. How can you let that bastard Rickman into our home? I never agreed to that. I had no choice. You had a choice. You always have a choice. See, you could have said no. You're never going to change. I'm wasting my time. Chrissy, don't. We can't. We. There's no we. There's no us. It's just you. I've had it.
Why do you deal with tags, crap? Seriously, why do you do it? It's a living. <laughs> What's your excuse? We're working on it. Well, like you've been working on your gardener? <sighs> We've never been friends, Tedesco. See, you'll never know what it's like to lose a child. Something that's a part of you, that you gave birth to. And loved unconditionally. Yeah, I've got my reasons why I'm here. But don't you ever, ever judge me. The way I deal with my pain is none of your goddamn business. But hey, I guess we've all got our own uh, little agendas, don't we, Mr. Tedesco? Marble tissues, an erythema in the nose and ear. Tissue desiccation suggests six to uh, eight months. He's been in cold storage. What the hell are you talking about when they found him? He was buried. Yeah, well, then he's been buried for three to four days. <laughs> he hasn't thawed yet. Why would they dump him now? That's crazy. I don't know. The freezer conked out. Maybe it was too big for the barbecue. Or they were holding on to him. Release him later. Like bait. Bait? <laughs> bait for bait for what? Listen, I'm gonna be here a little bit longer than I thought. Is there a motel in this town? No, no, there's nothing like that here. But uh, Marty will rent your room if you want her to. Stay at Marty's? Do the doors lock? Gentlemen, I'll be in touch, all right? Oh, and uh, Boo? Hmm. Let's try to stay focused, huh? Try not to lose that famous temper of yours. He knows who you are. Yeah. Seems so. It's when you figure you got everybody fooled. Turns out they're always smarter than you are. Um, none of us are perfect, Bull. Especially me. We all have skeletons in our closet. Hell, I've got a graveyard full. That's true enough, I'm sure, but you know, uh, your skeleton you can uh, lock back in the closet anytime you see fit. Mine are just, just lying in wait like some pit bull ready to bite my ass every time I relax. I was a little boy. I loved watching the horror shows, you know, every Saturday night. Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman. Everything in those movies, everything bad always happened during a full moon. I thought that was, I thought that was how it was in the movies, you know, but, uh, It was a full moon that night when everything went down for me. You know, you don't have to talk about this, Bull. Oh, Doc. February, five years ago. I've been on the force at that point about, um, I don't know, about 15 years. They wanted to, Doc, they wanted to make me a detective. I said, sure, you know. But they just had one more training assignment for me, one more, you know. And I get to move on up. My wife Janine and I, we were real proud of that, but uh, I figured I'll do whatever they need me to do, you know. So, uh, they signed me this rookie. Nice kid, his name was Jimmy. He was married with a little boy. Oh, he loved that little boy too. We talked about him all the time, all the time. When we came across this, uh, this sedan, it was uh, weaving. You know, so we pulled him over. Routine traffic check. No big deal. I didn't want to get my fat ass out of the car, so I said, Jimmy, you go ahead. You, you go ahead. This one's yours. You want to be a policeman, you go ahead. You be a policeman. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear a sound. All I saw was a flash of light. 
them out of that driver's window. I saw Jimmy go down. He went down so hard. So I got myself out of that car as fast as I could. And I flagged down a motorist to look after that boy. And I started chasing that piece of shit. He was running. He was younger than me. Chased him and chased him for five minutes, ten minutes, and I lost him. I hear on my radio that another unit picked him up. So I made my way back to the scene. And I got there just in time for the ambulance to pull away with dead Jimmy. He had a little boy dog. A beautiful young wife. And I look over and there's that prop. He's, he's smiling. Grinning, really, he's not laughing, he's not chuckling, he's just... He's just grinning like he's got some... some joke on God. So I did what I had to do. I took out my gun and I blew his fucking head off. Who's laughing now? They brought me up for review, it wasn't... Easy, I went on trial. My wife, Janine, left me. I don't blame her. I was no good to her. You're still wearing your wedding band. I tried to take it off, Doc. But I felt like whatever strength I had left was straining away. You beware of those full moons, Doc. Monsters just aren't in the movies, you know? be here. This is private property. I'm sorry. I'm a little lost. My truck broke down. I can't help you, friend. That isn't very neighborly. Sweet cheeks. Couldn't get enough of me, eh? What man can't I say? Marty, I need a room. <laughs> Sailor, you gotta buy me dinner first. Well, in that case, I'm gonna have to take a rain check. Well, in that case, I guess I'll just have to charge you $50 instead of $40 because you're being such an asshole. Here, here, here. Keep the change. It's around the corner, first house on the left, and here's the key. Thank you. Hey, call me if you need anything. Anything at all.
Thought I'd close up shop a little early today. See if my tenant needs anything. I could use some answers. Fine and dandy, shoot. You ever see this man before? No. Look again. Now, have you ever seen this man before? Never seen him. I found this in the room you rented me. It has the initials LD on it, which stands for Luke Devlin. So? So he was obviously here. Someone hid this under a floorboard. You have an explanation for that? No. I'm here, Marty, because this little town seems to welcome felons that nobody else wants. You bring them in, you embrace them, and then poof, they disappear without a trace, including one that I've been tracking for a very long time. And then I find his money clip hidden in your house. Now, doesn't that strike you as just a wee bit fishy? No. Marty, you understand you're talking to an FBI agent? And apparently not a very good one. <laughs> You see the way you're holding that money clip? You're messing up the fingerprints. Shouldn't you be using a hanky or tweezers or something? You know, you're a nice lady, Morty. And I like you. But if I find you screwing with me, I'll book you so fast your head'll spin like a merry-go-round on bad acid. My head's been spun so many times it ain't even funny. Do I have an explanation? No. Maybe you'd like me to explain the deficit, or who shot JFK, or the Bermuda Triangle. But that ain't happening. If I don't know, I don't know. I think you know more than you're letting on, Morty. A lot more. Bull? Marty. All right, honey, thank you so much for the information. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Who's that? Marty. Hey, Doc, let me ask you a question. You know this Rickman character a long time. D does everything about him add up to you? You know, he, um, he asked me to do a full autopsy on Devlin. In the FBI lab, they've got all the goodies. It's just kind of strange. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hey. You know, Marty said that he, he, he showed us some evidence, but that he was holding it in his fingers. Now, I'm no fed, you know, but I, I don't know anybody in law enforcement who does that. Maybe he forgot. Yeah, I don't buy it. i tell you something else she told me. She said that his car doesn't have E-plates on it. Hmm? He, government plates. You know, anybody doing government business has to drive around with government plates for liability. That doesn't make him Dillinger. Yeah, I'm not worried about Dillinger. I'm worried about Rickman. He told me he didn't want his office involved. I mean, that's actually more than strange. That's huh? bizarre. Yes, it is. Who are you calling? Hey, Sarah. Give me the FBI, please. I'm just following a hunch. We'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah, how do you do, young lady? I'm, I'm calling for Special Agent Paul Ripman, please. So what are you hoping to find out there, Sherlock Holmes? I don't know yet, Dr. Watson. R-I-C-K-M-A-N? I'm sorry, I'm still here. Uh, thank you for all your help. Bye-bye. You look like you've seen a ghost. Could be. Brookman resigned from the FBI three months ago. Hi. I'm from Mountain Bell. No, you're not. 
Nobody from Mountain Bell works this late. Nice try. Your, your wife asked me to check out a problem with the phones. My wife? She gave me 50 bucks, so I figure I should at least look, you know what I mean? Oh, and she gave me this. Oh, sorry. Can't be too careful. No, I completely understand. Well, this is my living room, and... Tedesco. What's up, man? I'm in. Went smooth? <laughs> hey, don't hurry over, all right? I'm gonna need a little time. Oh, I wouldn't count on it. I'll be over in 20. 30. Oh, shit. <laughs> Teddy, man, long time no see. Billy, Billy, how you been? I've been good, I've been good. I checked the house, there's no money, though. Well, that's not your problem, Billy. I'm taking half, that's your problem. What are you talking about? We agreed on a million. But I know where the money is. <laughs> Bullshit, man. <laughs> if you knew where the money was, you'd already have it. Teddy, I'm starting not to trust you, man. Then don't. I'll just take it all and toss you a bone for your troubles. Now, I need to make a call to Deputy Dipstick. We're gonna need a patsy, and Rickman's just the ticket. I'll tell you, Billy, all these years working this right under Tag's nose, he never even had a clue. That's what I love about those smug bastards. By the time they figure it out, it's too late. You had to get fucking greedy, huh, Teddy? Huh? You fuck. You know, I killed a few people today. <laughs> but I'm not leaving with this. Get him down! You're my favorite. This is Sheriff. Tag! We have a power failure?
you? We need to get you out of here, Mrs. Graves. What's happening? No! Please. What? What's please. happening? Please, please. Oh, where? Who was he? What's going on? Who was that? That skinhead I shot is part of a supremacist terror cell. A what? He's a member of a group that's after your husband and his money. What are you talking about? Ever since they dug up our old friend Luke Devlin, the word's been out that that ransom money is still right here, still up for grabs. Every low life that can carry a knife or a gun is homing in on you like moths to a porch light. That scumbag in there on your floor, he's just the first of many no, to come. That doesn't make any sense. Tag is, is a financier. Your husband is much more than a financier, Mrs. Graves. He has a great deal of knowledge that could compromise our national security. How could Tag compromise national security? Mrs. Graves, I've left the FBI to join Homeland Security. I followed those terrorists here in hopes of trying to stop them. Bring some closure to a terrible chapter in all our lives. <laughs> Mrs. Graves, I know what you think of me. But you must believe me when I tell you, you are in mortal danger. Wait, 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 wait. Where's Tag? Your husband is safe, but I need your help. I need your help to put a stop to this, okay? I need that ransom money. Homeland Security needs that money to draw this cell out. Put out the fire before anybody gets burned. You need to talk to Tag. I'm talking to you, all right? I mean, your husband has this damn hunter hero complex. I need your help. You're the level-headed one. I can't help you. I don't know where the money is. I'm trying to make things right here. You could never make things right. No, where the hell is my husband? <laughs> All right, I've done what I can. Now I'll do what I have to. <laughs> so will Oh, my God. I. You're dead. I saw you shoot him. Misdirection. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, looks like we're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. No! 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 I told you she didn't know anything. You know, you forced this little charade when you killed Tedesco. <laughs> Made us both richer, didn't I? Do it, Dad! He's resting. And it looks like it's time we wake him up. And pose the big question. Doc. 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 This number looks familiar to you. Yeah, that's Tag's private line. Son of a bitch. Christ's sake. It's time. Well, well, and well. It would seem that the proverbial cat is now out of the bag. Meow, meow. <laughs> but that's no big deal, because all we really want, Tag, is the money. OK? And then we will scat. Adios, Saranara, goodbye. Like we trust a lion son of a bitch like you. 
Ouch. Well, now that we've gotten the pleasantries out of the way. No, listen, listen. I'm going to have Billy untie you, right? Just as a sign of good faith, okay? And then we can get down to business. All right, Billy? Now, number one. <laughs> you were both involved in the murder and mutilation of Luke Devlin. I've got physical and circumstantial evidence that points to you. And three, you had motive. You've got nothing. Oh, yes, I do. You see, Luke was killed about six months ago, right? Now, you know how I feel about coincidence, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering how the authorities are going to feel. Look, Tag, we've both got something to lose and something to gain. You killed my son. I did not. Luke Devlin tortured and killed your son. And it was, it was Billy here that skinned him. You know, personally, I thought that was a little over the top, but Billy said that, uh, um... What was that you said, Billy? You gotta leave your signature. Yes! You've got to leave your signature. Your mark! You know, like, um, like the Zodiac Killers or the, or, the, uh, or the Hillside Strangler. You know, I mean, man, it's all in the image. The only image I see is your head mounted in my trophy room. Like Luke Devlin's tanned hide on that decorative shield of yours, huh? That was a very nice touch. You pay attention, Billy. You can learn something from this man. But what this man is forgetting is that I am the one holding the gun now. You know, if you'd have just given us the fucking money, I might have let your son live. Not! <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I'm thinking I probably would have wasted him just out of principle. <laughs> and you never saw it coming, did you, Tag? That I was the one behind it all along. As a matter of fact, I did. It was one in a myriad of threats from Luke Devlin. I was more angry than scared. This prick got off on a technicality, and there was nothing I could do about it. Tedesco told the FBI about Devlin's threats. He showed them the letters. But they said there was nothing they could do unless we were physically harmed. He just killed our child. Now he was threatening us. But that was another matter as far as the FBI was concerned. I spoke to my closest friends about Luke's threats. I didn't know what to do. They did. By the time Luke showed up, we were ready for him. We knew he was coming, and we knew how to deal with him. He would be the first. He wasn't expecting me, and I wasn't expecting what he was about to tell me. It wasn't my idea! It was Rickman! It was Paul Rickman! That fucking Ben was the one behind it! Think about it! No! It wasn't me! Who else could organize all those agents and erase all that incriminating information without a trace? Luke? No way. It had to be you, Rickman. Who else could have arranged that drop and had that car break down at the right time? He even told us there was more than one conspirator. A young man by the name of Billy. Lastly, who made that drop happen and made sure we never saw our son again? Rickman, the mastermind behind it all, except one thing. Luke knew he couldn't trust you. He had the money to ensure you'd botch the paperwork and he'd walk. After Luke was released, he took off and you couldn't find him. If Luke was smart, he would have flown off somewhere and lived like a king. But Luke's a psycho. He was obsessed with taking revenge and kept sending us death threats. We can be very persuasive, and he became extremely cooperative. I'll tell you where the money is! I'll tell you anything! Anything! I planned the money myself, the final pass to resistance. dance. 
I knew you wanted that money more than anything. Blood money you wanted, blood money you were gonna get. So, you knew about me and Billy all along, huh? I knew about you. We weren't expecting Billy. That's for damn sure. Why don't we all just shake dicks and get it over with? This is fucking bullshit. Do what you gotta do. Just get the fucking money. Excuse me? Where are you going? I didn't finish what I started. Do not kill her. Hey, hey, hey! What are you doing, man? Don't make me kill you before I know where the money is. I wasn't planning on killing her. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Tag. <laughs> you know, we can do this the easy way. Or the hard way. No. <laughs> Other one suits me fine. Oh, you might as well kill me. I got no problem with that. <laughs> Just like I had no problem skinning your kid. <laughs> oh, he was a real trooper. Right down to the last. You would have been proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this skin. I know, I know where the money, I know where the money is. Tell me. Let me go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. I let you go. You call the cops. I go to jail. That's a good idea. <laughs> Where's the fucking money? Huh? Huh? Hello. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide, you little bitch.
I'll find you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy it this time. Real fucking good. I should kill your monkey ass where you sit. You again. Oh, shit. Ha! Okay, no dick. You're next. so good, does it? Well, neither does getting thrown from a second-story window. You know, we went through all of this trouble simply because we had to do things your way. Well, now we are going to do things my way. I'm gonna tell you a little story, Jack. Before I was in the FBI, I was a CIA operative in there. And my specialty, no, my joy, was interrogation. <laughs> Not most people, they cracked very easily under electrocution or sodium pentothal. But there was always that, that few, that gifted few, who had higher pain thresholds than others. <laughs> or more disciplined minds. Those were my favorites. The hard cases. I did love a good challenge. And I had the special method that I employed for that gifted few. It was a simple garden to use for removing stems, but it was also excellent for removing fingers. I would ask them to imagine spending the rest of their lives having to ask someone to wipe their asses every time they took a shit. One last time, Mr. Graves. Where is my fucking money? Over there. My fucking money better be over there, Tag. Ha, ha, ha. 
now you hear what I'm saying you just relax and we're gonna do this thing right I'm taking him in that's enough we're gonna give this man his due process bull do you understand what we're doing here? Why do you think we brought you to Gravesend? Oh, God damn it, Doc, no. I'm not like you. I'm not like this. I made a mistake four years ago, and there's not a day goes by that I don't regret it. There's not a night goes by that I can actually sleep. We all sleep just fine, boy. <laughs> Quiet now. Quiet now. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. Don't rile these people down again. Do you hear me? Quiet! You people can't do shit to me! <laughs> He's gonna arrest me. And I'm gonna get off on some bullshit technicality. And I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. And you know what? I'm coming for you. And you. And you. And you. Fucking one of your little kids! <laughs> oh, what? What are you gonna do? Huh? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Maybe I'm a little more like these people than I thought I was. Wait. Wait, where are you going? Where are you going? Wait! Get out! Get out! So your hunting does go beyond animals, huh, Mr. Graves? <laughs> Worth twice the trouble and twice the lives. I'll be back. <laughs> and I'd really like to be able to receipt you for all that money, Mr. Graves. But I don't have a pen. I'm glad they shoot you again. God takes you to hell. Not one of my better days. I'm gonna get Doc. He's gonna pull this out. The bull, bull, pull this goddamn thing out. Oh, goddamn. Ah, so, all right, here. Screw this off. Screw this off. Here's what I want you to do. You bite down on that. You bite down that as hard as you can, and on three, on three, I'm gonna push it out. Are you ready? One. better than I am, Ted. We're both killers. No, he isn't. I am. Fucking Fed was the one behind it. 
think about it. No. Wait. I I told you everything. Please. Let me go. Let me go. Please, Jesus. Oh, please, Jesus, don't. 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 Oh, thank God. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Lou. I'm Marty, and this is Jack, our town doctor and coroner. You've been judged according to your works. We've got them all written down in this book. You're not gonna be smirking long. No, no way, no. What? He, he let me go. No, please don't. You can't, you, you're not a monster like me. You'll never be able to live with yourself. You killed my nephew. I've learned to live with a lot of things lately. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I win. <laughs> did to you, you must. If you don't, 
there will be others. I just don't know. I do. I know. Okay, be strong. Go to the safe room. This will all be over very soon. Okay. It'll all be okay. Okay. Well, we could put these three away. Forever, Dad. Now, we have Amanda's problem to take care of. Thanks. You're one hell of a friend. Company's here. Best behavior, everyone. Terry McConville, welcome to Gravesend. I'd like to thank you for inviting me to your town. It looks very peaceful. So, if you don't mind me asking, why would you want someone like me here? Gravesend knows what to do with people like you. <laughs> you had me going there for a minute. I did, didn't I? fit in just fine around here. I'm new here myself, boy, but I tell you, they seem like awfully nice people to me. It's a great house. Well, Terry, let me show you around. In fact, this is my favorite room. It's called the Great Hall. Tag. Nice things, Mr. Graves. Nice home, nice town, nice wife. I've been blessed. Aren't you worried something might happen? Take it all away? I mean, you never know. I appreciate your concern, Terry. Really do. But you needn't worry. Chrissy and I, we know how to take care of ourselves. <laughs> 